All right, hello, 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 everyone. Uh, we're just gonna do a very quick, um, might be, I keep saying quick, but they, they tend out to be like an hour long. But uh, the topic for today is gonna be the paper, Deep Reinforcement Learning from Human Preferences. Um, this is just uh, a project that I was working on and I haven't done the full implementation yet, but I think it's important for people to understand how it works and what the code looks like. So this is just gonna be a code walkthrough, of course. Uh, we're gonna go through the paper for a minute first to explain what exactly it is that is going on. And uh, then we'll look at the code and see how to do it. It's actually very, very simple. Uh, this problem is pretty much reduced to simple supervised learning of a reward function um, based on human preference. Um, so for many standard human, uh, no, for many standard uh, supervised learning problems, we have a data set with true data and then we make predictions and we optimize against those predictions um, and that's supervised learning. Um, however, um, like so our ground truth data in this case, like if you wanted to learn a reward function, let's say you had a, a reinforcement learning environment that you wanted, uh, that you needed a reward function for. Um, you could obviously hand specify and write out all the rules to, to do that. Um, or if you wanted to, um, train a reward function, technically speaking, you could take all the states and the actions and hand write uh, rewards for each state and action pair. Um, and uh, there, there are other papers that will do something along those lines and uh, we might do a tutorial like that in the future, but we're not gonna be hand specifying the specific reward to expect uh, given a state and taking an action. Well, um, what this does is, uh, this paper is, it. It, get, it lets the agent run through the environment and collecting rewards from a reward function, which is a neural network. And what happens is at the end, it goes ahead and it selects a few segments of state action, state action pairs or state action pair traje trajectories, and it compares the two trajectories and it lets a human see two trajectories. And what the, uh, the human can do is, let's say um, for, for this case, uh, the goal of the agent is to reach a goal, you know, very simple thing. So uh, the human would look at two trajectories and say, oh, um, this one, the agent is just acting randomly. And this one looks like it's acting randomly, but it looks like it's doing more, like it's trying more to get to the goal. So I'd prefer the one um, that's going to the goal. And you, you do that for um, many, many segments. So, um, and all you're doing is you're selecting a preference between two different um, trajectories and so when you when you select a preference, what you're saying is the one that I prefer this obviously um, since this is the desired objective or closer to the de desired objective, this preference should receive a higher reward. So um, what what the loss function does is it just goes ahead and it tries to optimize the loss to between the two clips, increase the reward for the objective that is supposed to be receiving the higher reward between the two. Um, and in the paper, it's done for only two separate, um, you're comparing two clips at a time, but there's no reason to my understanding why you can't compare four clips at a time or five. Um, but you know, right now it's, it's having you select one and you're optimi and you're trying to maximize the reward for that one. Um, but I mean, you could, you could theoretically, I guess, uh, do it with more than, um, two segments. And the reason why I say this is not a full implementation is because we don't, um, well, I don't do it for entire trajectories of segments. So for it, they did like video segments and they took the trajectory and they played it out. Uh, we're just doing it for individual state action pairs. So we're doing it for trajectories of length one. Um, and it, just because this is supposed to be a simple tutorial, I didn't want, and you're gonna see already, there's a lot of like indexing and like it gets, it, it gets messy very quick, um, or at least the way that I ended up doing it. Um, so, yeah, if, if you'd like to, we're gonna, well, I'll go over. The only thing I haven't done is um, summed over the entire trajectory and we'll look at that right now, okay? So um, basically what, what this is gonna be is we have our RL algorithm. This is any algorithm. I'm gonna use reinforce because you can do it with any agent, okay? Um, it takes an action in the environment and um, the environment pr provides an observation back for um, the, the RL algorithm. But then again, you could uh, take the observations 
And if we have, uh, you know, two separate observations, we can send that to the human for feedback and they can prefer one. Um, and then our reward function will optimize to prefer that one. So it will maximize, it will, will, it will increase the amount of reward for that type of trajectory. So in future uh, segments when the agent is acting, um, it will be more informed to what actions are actually gonna give it a higher reward. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip through most of it. Let's see, I'm trying to actually decide now what, what, what pieces I should show you. Uh, I think we're just gonna go to fitting the reward function. Okay, and um, so, okay, actually, no, let's, let's go right up here just so we understand exactly um, I'll just read through the section, read through. All right, so let's say we have uh, a couple trajectory segments is a sequence of observations. So observation and action, observation, action, um, that's one trajectory. Um, and we're sampling trajectories, um, you know, from our environment. So each trajectory is gonna be sigma, uh, lowercase sigma. And we say a preference, which is, it's kind of like a, I don't know if there's a name for that symbol, but it's like a greater than less than sign, but it's kind of curly, kind of curved. Um, so um, we're gonna be optimizing a preference. So we could say one trajectory is preferred over another trajectory if the reward received from the entire trajectory is greater than the reward received from the less preferred trajectory. So we have one trajectory and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, for each state action pair, we're gonna run it um, against our reward function after it's been collected by our agent. So we're gonna have our full trajectory with no rewards from our agent yet, just, um, and um, so once we select our two trajectories that we would like to compare, we're gonna go ahead and run our reward function over the trajectories and sum up the rewards for that entire trajectory. And we'll do that for both of them. So. Obviously, the, the trajectory with higher rewards is preferred over the one with lower rewards, okay? Um, so that's that's essentially what this is saying right here, okay? Um, so let's look at um, the method, and we're going to skip optimizing policy. Well, so let's look at the method. So we have a policy, and it receives a, a state of... Um, you know, some observations after taking some actions, um, I believe. Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the policy pi interacts with the environment to produce a set of trajectories. The parameters of pi are updated by traditional reinforcement learning algorithm um, in order to maximize the sum of predicted rewards. Uh, and you'll see in the code, I actually copied the, the code from another reinforced tutorial that we did the discrete or categorical reinforced tutorial. Um, and then we select pairs of segments um, of trajectories or segments, whatever you like to say. So you select two of them um, and each trajectory is, you know, oh, well, this is, this is our buffer of trajectories. So we select two trajectories and then between the two of those, the parameters of the mapping um, R hat are optimized via supervised learning to fit the comparisons collected from the humans so far. Um, and here's where we deviate just a little bit from um, what they show versus what we're gonna do today. And it says these processes run asynchronously with trajectories flowing from process one to process two, human comparison flowing from process two to process three, and the parameters for our hat flowing from process three to process one, following subsection, okay. So um, just so you know, the, the great thing about this is you inform the reward function. So the, the reward function is learning from my, my preference or the human preference that's selecting um, a preference between two trajectories. But as the agent is running, every single step that the agent is running, it's using rewards from that same learned reward function. Um, so if you if you give it one step of update for the reward function, uh, you can still use that for as many steps on the agent. But obviously until you have a learned reward function that is very well, um, your agent may not learn very well the same thing like with actor critic methods how if your critic doesn't hasn't learned um you know the value of each state yet um the actor can't really be optimizing so much because it doesn't really know what to optimize against um so it says it's running asynchronously here but for my implementation um i just had it at the end of each um 
at the end of each episode um, for for the like maze that it's trying to solve, what I do is I just sample from any single episode two different um, states and um, I just compare those. So it's still, it's not running asynchronously, but, it, it's, but it's only doing a single update per entire episode for the reward function. However, every single step that the agent is taking um, is still, you know, using the reward for every single step. Anyways, uh, we're gonna skip that because optimizing the policy, it's the same as normal policy. Um, okay, already went over that. Okay, well, we should probably discuss this. So the human judgments are recorded in a database of triples um, right here, sigma one, sigma two, and mu where um, sigma one, sigma two are the two segments and mu is a distribution over those two segments, indicating which segment the user preferred. If the human selects one segment as preferable, then mu puts all its mass on that choice. Um, if the human marks the segment as equally preferable, then mu is uniform. Finally, if the human marks the segments as incomparable, then the comparison is not included in the database. Um, I actually don't do this, this last little part. I just, um, if they're not comparable, I just say they're equal. I just put it as um, normal distribution and I just get, um, just to keep it simple. You guys could go ahead and do that where you just omit, um, where you just select an option and it omits it, okay? So let's talk about fitting the reward function, then we can jump right into the code. So um, we can interpret a reward function estimate as a preference predictor if we view uh, the reward function estimate as a latent factor explaining the human's judgments and assume that the human's probability of preferring a segment um, depends exponentially on the value of the latent reward summed over the length of the clip. Um, which is, um, so if we were to say um, the preference of sigma one over sigma two is equal to the exponential of the sum of all rewards for that specific um, reward trajectory. Oh, sorry. Um, so for, let's say for sigma one, for every single time step inside sigma one, uh, we're gonna receive a reward. Um, we're gonna run that on our reward function. And for every single reward we receive, we're gonna take the sum of that and we're gonna exponentiate the sum of the rewards for the entire trajectory. Um, and we're gonna do that. Uh, so if we prefer uh, sigma one, it's sigma one, um, that formula over uh, sigma one plus sigma two. And obviously if we prefer um, sigma two, it'd be um, the, the exponential of the sum of the rewards of the trajectory sigma two over the exponential of the sum of rewards for um, uh, trajectory one plus the exponential of the sum of the rewards for trajectory two. Um, depending on what the preference is, just determines what goes on the numerator uh, for the for the trajectory, the sum of the trajectory to um, exponentiate <clears throat> of the rewards. Um, <clears throat> so we chose R hat to minimize the cross entropy loss between these predictions and the actual human labels. So um, let's look at the loss, um, what exactly is going on, what it's optimizing, and then we're going to jump into the code. Okay, so. Um, so, you know, for all of our trajectories that we're, we're comparing, let's just forget about that for now. So um, <laughs> what, what we need to do is, so anytime we have two, two, um, two trajectories and we select one, it depends. Like if we select one is preferred, that means we put, um, we have a categorical distribution uh, with, let's say we have, a one right here, if we prefer the first one, uh, all the mass is gonna be on the first index of the categorical distribution, and the second one is gonna be zeroed out, okay? Which is uh, mu of one and mu of two. This is just defining the distribution. So this is saying, if we prefer this one, mu of one will be one. If we prefer the second one, mu of two will be one. And if we def uh, consider them as equal, they'll both be mu of one and mu of two will both be equal to one because it will be a normal distribution to a categorical distribution, okay? Oh, <laughs> so, um, oh boy. Um, so, just realized I forgot the log term in my implementation. Anyways, um, so we could say that the provo, <sighs> so 
anyways so we have a preference um, times whether it's preferred um, times the log of that preference plus um, whether this one is preferred so if that's zero one times the log of the preference for this other trajectory um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to maximize the amount we prefer any one segment so this will go ahead and if we put this in a standard optimizer, this will minimize um, the preference for the trajectory that we've selected. So just like a lot of other things that we have in um, a lot of other things that we have, um, we need to go ahead and put a minus sign. So we're actually maximizing the preference. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to the code. I'm going to try to uh, call <laughs> call log on it inside of my whoops inside of my reward function update rule. And if it works, works. If it doesn't, um, I guess I'll just edit it in the future. Okay. So, all right. So I just opened it in, um, in Google Colab. And um, I must say, honestly, like the hardest thing about this was actually just making the little display um, for it, like the little display to, be able to compare the two preferences so um, so you could get the human input and you know an unskilled human can differentiate whether uh, you know an agent is doing better in one case or another case so uh, we're gonna use matplotlib to display um, our little grid world okay and um, so we need to include um, the magic which is percent sign matplotlib, matplotlib inline and we need to do a couple imports, which is import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import matplotlib, um, okay. And we need to import numpy as np, import random, import statistics, import tensorflow as tf, from tensorflow.keras import layers, okay. And now we now need to go to our environment and see how our reward function is used in our environment. So previously, like, um, we would have like uh, a reward function and based on some condition, we would just hand specify, oh, it, we're at max steps, that's bad. We, we couldn't solve it, minus 100 or something like that. Or we did, we did something good, oh, the reward for this, oh, it reached the goal, positive 100 or whatever, okay? So that's how we had it previously. Right now we're gonna use a, a learned reward function, which is just going to be a um, neural network, okay? So, anyways, so let's go ahead and so we did our imports. So our environment is essentially the same everywhere that it is. Uh, this is just a simple grid world environment. Uh, we just, you know, define uh, two, two agents in a 2D plane. Um, I mean, sorry, two, two points on a 2D plane and we have a player piece and we have a, a you know, goal piece, which is piece one. And we're trying to get the agent to move there. And we have, um, and then once we, we, we have the X, Y and X, Y for each of those, we put that in positions and that's gonna be our state. Um, and we're just doing standard, you know, maintenance stuff that we have for all of our environments, self.state equals initialize state, reset step counter on reset. Um, increment steps and just based on whether we select, since we have um, four actions up, down, left, right, we're just gonna go ahead and decode our actions on the inside. So if it's if it's zero, it's up, um, change the X value, so change the Y value. If it's right, change the X value to the um, be greater. If it's down, change um, the, the Y value to go down. And if it's to the left, change the X value to go to the left and so here we have uh, a max steps and we have our reward is gonna be equal to, and here's, um, here's where it starts to get like a little bit fun. So our reward function, what it's gonna go ahead and do is it's gonna take a look at what state we're in. So previously, you know, when we hand specified our reward, we would look at what state we're in and we would just give it a reward. We would say, it looks like we ended up in this state. Here's your reward. Um, and we tell that to the agent. Um, so our reward function is gonna be, uh, estimating what the reward is. So when we give the reward back to the agent, when we return that reward, what we're actually gonna be doing is calling our reward function on the environment, on the state of the environment. So we're gonna tell the reward function, here's the current state that you ended up in. What's the reward that you want? 
and that's when it's going to return to the agent. So let's say rewarder is our neural network and it's going to be defined below. You'll see it in just a second. Let's say rewarder is our neural network that is going to be um, estimating our reward. Uh, we just need to pass it um, the current state and say training is equal to false. And we need to go ahead and it's going to give us a prediction, a list of predictions. So we have to get the zeroth indexed and return that as an integer so we can go ahead and do the rest of the math that we need with it. Okay. And that's what the rest of our environment looks like. But you see, anytime we have a reward, we're just calling um, our reward function on it and getting the, the actual reward from the estimate. Okay. So we're just calling rewarder and turning that into an integer after we get the first element. Okay. And so here we have our agent, which is just a simple actor agent for the reinforce algorithm. So, um, takes a number of actions, a number of hidden units um, at input. So we define a, a layer with number of hidden units, um, real activation function, and uh, we, let, we let the output layer be the number of actions, and we're gonna select an action from that output layer. So when we, we call, we take our input observation, we pass that um, through shared one, which is our first layer, and then, uh, which is X, and then we have our output as calling the output layer on X, okay? Now let's look at our reward function. So um, this is, I, you can just copy actor code and paste it and just delete number of actions and change um, the name of the layers and have the last output layer be a single unit because it's just predicting a scalar reward for the output because this is just predicting rewards. Okay, <clears throat> just like a, like a critic, like a critic essentially. Um, but we're training the, the critic with a different update rule. Kind of, kind of, okay. So um, we're gonna go ahead, number of hidden units um, on our reward function called rewarder, inherits from tf.caris.model, um, basic stuff, calling layers.dense with number of hidden units, activation ReLU, and our actual output, which is reward, is gonna be layers.dense with one unit on the output. We're gonna um, do define call, and we're gonna pass our input to our first layer, and the output from that first layer into our reward. Um, output layer, which is gonna return a single scalar value. So let's go ahead, instantiate our agent, our, um, our rewarder, which is our reward function, and our grid world, which is our environment. Okay, and I'm gonna skip over this. Um, if you guys have any confusion about what is going on here, look at the reinforced tutorials. Um, but inside the reinforced tutorials and all of them, we have uh, a function called step episode, okay? And um, what we did, so we're going to be training the reward function on a state, an action, and it ends up in the next state. So if we were to sum over all of them, we could use the entire trajectory. But the way we're going to be doing it is uh, it's going to be in a single state. It's going to take an action, and then it needs to know the reward for being in the next state. Okay, so we need to keep track of our states and our actions. And... Um, we're going to log those. So we just have two lists called states and actions, which is added, which we didn't have in other tutorials. And just in the middle right here, uh, you see um, right here, I used a different distribution than I, I normally did just to receive the, the index of the action. But this is the same as if we were to use uh, uh, TensorFlow probability and select an action. This is just using uh, TensorFlow random. Um, it's, just, it's just a different way of doing it, but we'll still receive an action from it. Okay. And um, so we have, uh, once we've selected an action, we have, and before we've applied the action to our environment, we have to take our state that we're in and append that. Um, so our, obs our current observation is equal to states. And um, and our current action is equal to the selected action. Okay. And this, the rest here is boilerplate right here. And um, at the end, we have return action list, rewards, states, and actions. So we're gonna deal with the states and actions inside um, of a separate section. So we're gonna return those and handle those later. Um, our actor loss is the same as standard reinforce. Optimizer is the same. Okay. And this is literally like the most <laughs> complicated part about the whole thing, which isn't even like the update rule. Okay, so what we're doing right here 
is we're just um, we're just building a simple uh, user interface, like the most simple using matplotlib, just so the user can see two different um, states and the action taken in those states. And they can say, oh, when you're in this state um, and you take this action versus you, you're in this state and you take this other action, or sorry, the separate state and you take the separate action, um, which one of these two do I prefer? So we're just building a very, very simple uh, user interface for them to be able to select that. And they're going to take their input and they're going to say whether it's the one on the left, the one on the right, or they're both the same. And that's going to de um, define how the distribution looks. Okay. So, um, Okay, and um, we'll, we'll go back to that in a second. We're gonna call that from inside of this other preference update function, okay? So let's go. So um, this preference update function, it takes states, actions, and the rewarder, which needs to be opti optimized because we're gonna do the preference update. This is gonna be optimization loop for it, okay? So what we needed to do is, so we receive state action trajectories, and we need to sample some um, specific states that we're gonna compare. Now the way that the paper did it is that um, it actually used like an ensemble method and it, it essentially just said like, hey, like let's compare some, some states and it used ensembles to say whenever there was uncertainty between different ensemble models, it said, hey, like I'm very uncertain about this. Let's compare these two because we don't even know what's going on. I just randomly, I did something else. I just randomly selected two state action pairs um, and we're just going to compare them randomly, um, but it's it's still optimizing the same thing. So it like they don't have to actually be like different, um, you know, by, via ensemble methods, or they don't even have to be similar. It's just you're comparing to which one would we prefer to maximize. That's all we have to be concerned about. So we're just going to get some IDs from uh, random dot sample. So uh, we we need to know the length of our state's trajectory. And for, for the range of the length of the state's trajectory, minus two, um, because of indexing and the fact that we're actually gonna be optimizing on our next state, because we're in a state, uh, we take an action, and then we get rewarded for the next state that we end up in, okay? So um, I did that so we, we can still index the next state without like having like index out of bounds errors, okay? And like, you know, anyways. So we need to go ahead and we need to send um, those two transition ideas with the states and actions uh, to our compare function so we can so the com so the user can compare them and make a selection so we called compare and so what we're really just doing is we have all of our states um, and we're just indexing it so we we're just taking our states right here and I'm not gonna <laughs> talk through this indexing that I did but what we're just doing is we have like batches of states and um, we, we have specific transition IDs like, oh, th these are the transitions we're going to use. Um, and, you know, in the states, there's X's and Y's via, you know, goal and target piece and like player piece. Um, so this is just uh, breaking it all up. So we have our first data sample X's or first data sample Y's, second data sample X's, sec second data sample Y's. Uh, and we're going to define... Um, uh, a plot in matplotlib so we can go ahead and show um, the grid world on each one and what action is being taken by the agent um, for each state okay and uh, that's that's what all this code is for right here I'm not going to talk through it it's very simple stuff just go ahead um, copy it and I just used some colors I used yellow for the player and I used green for the goal you know you want to go go to the green but um and this is all just boilerplate because, um, well, I should stop saying boilerplate, but this is all just like utility stuff. This is this is this has nothing to do with the actual algorithm. If you're doing if you're building something separate other than a grid world, you wouldn't even need um, all of this stuff. Like the way you would compare them uh, would probably be different, especially if you're doing it with trajectories. You'd have to like sequence the tra trajectories and put that into a video clip and then display that. Okay, and I just had. <clears throat> And I had one more function, which is just, so as we display it, have decode action right there. 
we're gonna have um, so it's gonna show what the state is and then it's gonna write out the action that was taken in that state instead of having zero one two three for up down left right it's just gonna be um, returning that as a string whether it's up down left or right just to make it easier as we're doing the comparisons okay now for the update rule for um, you know for this which is this right here for loss how does that happen how do we uh, so let's go ahead and define the preferences um, and you know we have distribution and let's go ahead and apply that okay so um, we've compared um, okay. so with compare we just display um, the two differences so we now need to select uh, one of uh, one of three options the left one the right one or whether the same um, and so I just call preference is you take user input and you say select preference and you know this is just a string for the user to understand so um, I was gonna use WASD but um, but I just used a for left so the left trajectory um, D for the right trajectory is preferred and s for uh, the trajectories are the same so um, depending on that so if the left trajectory is preferred which is a um, the distribution is going to put all its mass on the left and no mass on the right if the right trajectory is selected uh, the distribution will put nothing on the on the left and all its mass on the right however if they're the same uh, they're they're equal so it's a normal distribution so they both have um, equal mass okay so um, okay perfect so now what we need to do is we we have our transition IDs for the state and action and now we need to go ahead and optimize against the next state and um, collect the reward for the next state that we ended up in okay and so just this right here everything from here to here so p1 p2 is um you know preference one and you know if you flip the sign that's p2 uh, which is the exponential of the sum of the rewards for an entire trajectory we're going to forget about this sum since we're only doing it for a single state however if you have entire video sequences or entire trajectory lengths you're going to do the sum over the entire trajectory okay um but we're not going to use the sum since we only have it for a single um single step and summing over a single step is going to be the equivalent of a single step itself uh, you could just go ahead and call reduce sum or just call sum around um, each of these terms so you could put sum over this term sum over this term and sum over this term okay so uh, what we do is we get a rewarder to make an estimate of the next state so we have our state's trajectory and we have our tr transition id like the, the expected state that we took the action in but remember we need to predict the reward for the next state so we index that the states to the next state so uh, the, the index of the previous state plus one. So we end up in next state. Um, and we're going to do that for both. So we're going to have reward estimates um, for both trajectories. So this would be like sigma one and sigma two um, and like what the reward is for sigma one and for sigma two. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply um, the exponential of the sum of rewards. So if you were to do this, um, you, you, you would take like a running total if you were to do the full implementation. Let's say you're calling rewarder on all the states. You could just call the sum over all of it. Um, so like you, you just keep a running total of it. Um, or you could obviously store them in a list and then over here you could call, let's say this is rewards. I'm just gonna change that for two seconds. Let's say that's all the rewards for, uh, you know, the first segment which we preferred we just take the sum or tf.sum depending on how it's looking all right and you do that for every single term that we call tf.x on inside of the exponent uh, you, you take the sum of it first okay so preference one um, is equal to tensorflow.exponent of the, re the first reward over tensorflow.exponent of the first reward plus tensorflow.exponent of reward two so this is equivalent to um, this right here. 
because this is assuming we have a preference for one. However, if we have a preference for two, so if this sign is reversed, um, we're gonna have um, preference two is equal to, and we're just changing the numerator. So um, since we prefer preference two, we, we put reward two um, for the sum of reward two, rewards two on the numerator. So tf.x of reward two divided by tf.x um, for exponent of reward one plus tf.x of reward two, okay? Now for the actual loss. So now we've computed um, p of sigma is greater than, um, p of one is greater than p of two and p of two is greater than p of one. However, uh, we need to know what is actually true. So we know the values for each of these right here, not including the log term, okay? Um, and we have to multiply that by the distribution, which is what the user, user actually selected. So um, we have our distribution that we created depending on the user input. So um, our, our, the preference for the first one is gonna always be for the, the first column and preference for the second one is always gonna be for the second column. So we just multiply um, the preference for each column, I mean each preference by the value of its column. So um, the preference for the first one times our distribution's value for the first column and our um, preference for the second one times the distribution um, for the second column if it's actually preferred. And you know, if it prefers this one, um, dist zero will be one and this will be zero and vice versa. And if they're both equal, equally preferred, both of these will equal one, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna look tf dot, whoops. Um, I mean, I'm, Anyways, so let me just go ahead very quickly. Um, and see tf.math.log. So I'm gonna do tf.log and see hopefully it works. Uh, tf.log because uh, you guys see here that I'm supposed to use the log of P1 times the distribution and the log of P2 times the distribution. But I just have um, P1 and P2 now, but we're forgetting the log term. So let's go ahead and try to see, hopefully we can um, get that in. And tf.log. And if this doesn't work, we'll just come back through this section. I already know exactly where it is we messed up. tf.log. Okay, so now that we have that, um, our loss um, is now identical to the loss for fitting the reward function. So now um, we have completed our update rule for the reward function of, well, for computing the loss. Now finishing the update rule, we just um, optimize our um, trainable variables for a reward function with respect to the loss and optimize, okay? And um, so our actual training loop is the same, we run an entire um, episode. And then um, once we've done that, at the end of the episode, that's when we go and we go through the episode and we um, call preference update and it selects two random trajectories or two random states, in this case, single states. Um, and then on those two single states, it's gonna show um, the state and the action that was taken, um, like down here, and you'll see it when we run it in a second, it'll let you know, here's the state on the left and action that we took I mean, it's labeled in it and it's like, here's the state that we're in, like the agents down here and the goals up here, and here's the action we took. And between these two, which one is preferred? Um, and then you do that and it's just gonna do that in a loop and then it goes, you know, back to the top. So you just select it and it updates it for you. Um, hopefully tf.log works. I'm gonna do tool, sorry, runtime, factory reset runtime. I'm gonna run all and hopefully this works, fingers crossed. Deciding tf.log is making me so scared right now. It's like, oh no, it's not gonna work on camera. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, great. So it's working. So um, here we have two states and um, the, the states actually look similar. So we have our goal in the upper left-hand corner and our, sorry, our, our agent in the upper left-hand corner and our goal in the bottom right-hand. And for both of them, they're saying, 
go up. So these both are selecting the wrong action. So what we want to do is select S for same because they're they're the same. We should not prefer one over the other. They're both suboptimal. And look at that. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and I'm just going to continue right here once I get this. You guys Okay, we're recording again. Okay, so I didn't even need to like um need to stop it. It was like two seconds. Um, but yeah, like when I when I went over here, I saw that the shortcut said tf.log. Um, but obviously it's short for tf.map.log, and it wasn't finding it. So um, I I just changed it from where did it go? Okay, the loss right here from tf.log to tf.map.log of the preference for um for one clip for tf.math.log for the preference of another clip times the distribution of um, like um, the preference for that point. Like the, like the preference for that, like the user selected preference, um, which defines the distribution for preferring that clip. Anyways, so um, I'm gonna run time, factory reset run time, run all one more time, and we're just gonna go through it. Uh, just so you guys can see comparison of a few clips. Now in the paper it says that like um, you have to do several hundred comparisons um, and that they say like I think it says like one to three hours of comparison but the reason that this is very um, very important is you know for one person who's technical to try to define a reward function and to actually do it accurately and understand um, like how do you re reward um, how do you re reward a self-driving car let's say um, you know, there's there's different ways to, you know, say, oh, like distance from lane lines and, you know, number of people killed, you know, if that number exceeds a certain value or something. But if you can just show clips where, you know, the cars are getting in crashes theoretically or going over lane lines and showing clips where it might and, you know, show clips where there's reckless drivers versus, you know, people are stopping at lights or whatever. You can say, oh, obviously, I per you know, the preference is the reward is supposed to be for this one where the driver's driving better. Um, instead of this one where we just hit a dog or something like that. Um, and you can do that for a lot of situations. Like if you wanted a pick and place robot, it's very hard to define um, pick up a cup as a reward function. So after looking at several hundred clips and like the, the thing about human preferences is the reward you're trying to optimize, like you should be able to define it. So if you can see the action, you should be able to say, oh, oh hey, like, look, I'm looking at this. This is more optimal than this other one. So that way you don't have to be a programmer or someone who's involved in this to do this. You can say, hey, like we built the agent, um, but we still need to train it and we don't have a reward function for it. But let's say you're building like a dishwashing agent. You can just tell a dishwasher, hey, like um, just compare these clips. Instead of doing your job for five hours today, just look at this robot, try to wash dishes and tell it when you think that it's doing better or worse. And, you know, instead of paying someone, uh, you know, $50 an hour, you can pay someone $20 an hour and their time, um, you know, they have, well, not that they have more time, but I think, I think you understand like the flexibility of uh, learning a reward function and instead of hand specifying a reward function. So let's go ahead and compare a few examples. And so uh, we have our agent in the bottom left and our goal in the top right. So between these, the agent going down or going up, obviously up is preferable. So we'd want the right segment. So we're going to type D. <laughs> every single time okay whoops okay so um yeah so let's go ahead and compare some segments so we have our agent up here we don't want it to move left obviously moving down is more optimal so we we prefer the right action so um you know we're gonna put d for the right segment and you know, obviously you can do this on your computer instead of in Colab. So, cause I don't know why the, the input column, the input row is so long, but for both of these, look, they're one on top of the, the other. So if it goes right or right, they're both equivalent. So this is going to be same. And, um, if you were to build this better and up, they're both the same or very similar. Um, all right, this one, they're the same. So we're going to hit same. And this one, this one, you don't want the agent to go up. You want it to go down to the left. So this one is going down. So the one on the right is preferred, okay? 
And so if you were to do this for several hours, you could have an agent learn how to do very complex tasks. Um, in the paper themselves, they talked about some of the tasks that they had it um, learn how to do. Like uh, the hopper robot, they taught it how to do a backflip. And obviously you can specify doing a backflip by, um, you know, heel off the ground, whatever, in proportion to the relation of like the head or whatever, or, or something like that. But hand specifying a reward function for getting this, this little guy to do a backflip, it like, I wouldn't want to do it. So if like, I could just look at clips of this randomly acting and I say, no, this is more like the, the, the action that I'd like to see it do, uh, do more things like this. And eventually when it starts doing things like jumping and then eventually it's going to do things like jumping and kicking back or whatever. If you keep selecting for several hours at the end, like it'll understand, Oh, I'm supposed to be doing something where I jump up and, I put this part over whatever and they talk about using the cheetah uh, the, the half cheetah i believe actually um reacher and some some other environments that they used it for um but it's great stuff and you should go ahead and try to implement it into your environment and i, I said we we're going to go over many things as far as reward learning and there are different types of ways to do uh, reward learning um, and using expert data or using user input to train a reinforcement learning agent but um <clears throat> this is this is just one way um and i will go over other things such as rl um sorry inverse reinforcement learning and you know some people consider inverse reinforcement learning uh to have expert data and then have your agent directly optimize a policy given that data and sometimes you could consider inverse rl as something similar to this as um using expert data to train a reward function which your agent then learns um, and we'll go over different methods this is just one of many and this is probably the most basic implementation you can do um, you know if you're if you're feeling crazy uh, try to do it with actual trajectory segments and take taking the sum over the, those trajectory segments instead of individual transitions um, you know because if you have a sequential task which is what reinforcement learning is for you're gonna be having uh, trajectory so you could go ahead and just use those directly, but you're going to be having to do a lot more. I just want you guys to see the loss function and the update rule, because that's the most important thing. Um, and like the, the flow of information about how it goes. So just one, one last time we have our environment and our environment, um, gives us the rewards, um, through our reward function and it converts it to an integer after a reward function has made an estimate of the reward, um, that gets given to our agent. And then to update the reward function, which is the only thing that this is about, is we just um, select a couple segments randomly and display that for the user, okay? And um, the user is supposed to define whether uh, one of those two segments is preferred or not. And after it does that, it goes ahead and assigns um, like a mass. Like if one is preferred, it assigns it a one, and if one is um, not preferred, it assigns it a zero. And there's no reason that you could do it with only two. Like for example, um, this preference right here, if you had like six clips you were showing on the top, it's the preferred term, but you could have it like TF dot exponential of, uh, you know, the first segment, the second segment, third segment, fourth, and just um, that way you can compare even more than two different segments at once. Um, so um, just for the actual update, uh, we select which one we prefer, uh, define a distribution for that preferred um, segment and um, make a reward estimate on the next state and you know for the trajectory you just do that for the entire trajectory uh, for a sequence and then define the preference as the exponential of the, you know a single reward over the sum of all of those and you're going to do that for both and then apply whether or not that was actually preferred by the distribution to the preference um, and add those two terms together and the thing is for this right here, one is always going to be canceled out unless they're the same. So we're just maximizing the preference um, by minimizing the loss of that preference. Uh, back propagation, um, you know, I think you guys understand exactly what's going on at this point. And really all we did is we have a preference update to update our reward function. I hope this was useful um, by any means. I do apologize uh, for the length and my level of clarity that I'm able to display this with, but I really hope um, I was able to help 
someone hopefully because I think this is great stuff this in my opinion is I, I like a lot of like the inverse RL papers obviously <laughs> like um, but this this one is just super cool because it's not like you're not doing direct supervised training you're not saying oh when I see this this state here's the reward I want to give it's learning the reward not by direct supervision but like through a slightly different means anyways you all have a good day goodbye <laughs> uh, hope you're all doing well